Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's look at permutations written in cycle notation um, and play off the idea that that these guys don't commute with each other if they're not disjoint. So for instance, what if I take like one, two, and I take one, two on both sides? Now, normally one, two and one, two cancel each other out since they're inverses of each other. But in this case, or right now, they are um, in different places. And since I can't commute this over here necessarily, they shouldn't cancel out. Let's see kind of what happens. This is going to be, if I put one in, it's going to end up being, well, go to two, and then in here it goes to three, then it fixes it. So one actually goes to three. What's well, already different than just one, two, three. Um, let's try three. Three goes in, fixes, jumps to one, and one goes to two. So the final output is two. Where does two go? Well, it really only has one other place to go, which is one, since I'm only dealing with three things, and this is a permutation. And, I've already, and I'm already sending something to three and something to two. Now let's just try that out though. As two comes in, it goes to one, and then here it goes to two, and then two goes to one, which means that two ended up going to one overall. So two went to one, then to two, and then back to one. So um, two will go to one in the end. So one, three, two is the final result of putting this and this. And we know that one, two, three, and one, three, two are different functions. They would be the same function if we, if we had things commute, but right now they are quite different. Now notice something else. What if I take one, th one two, three, and I swap one with two? I swap two with one. And then swapping one and two does nothing with three, so I'll leave that there. Look what we have here. This one goes to three, three goes to two, two goes to one is the same as this right here. These two are the same. Let's notice something. Let's replace this one, two with, the, with a permutation, which we will call G. G, composed with one, two, three, composed with, and I'm gonna write this as G inverse. One, two is its own inverse. So right now I'll write it as G inverse. Let's see what happens. When I plug something in to this permutation or function right here, I'm gonna plug in G of one and see what happens to it. When I plug in G of one, right here, this G inverse sends me back to one. So I put one in here. One goes in here and it goes to two. Great. Then two goes in here. And G and it goes through G and it outputs G of two, which means that this cycle right here becomes G of one, G of two. Where does G of two go? Well, let's put G of two in here now. G of two comes in, G inverse says, nah, -uh, let's just do two because it undoes what G does. So you get two, two comes in here, and it goes to three. And then in the out output, it's g of three. So g of two goes to g of three. Now, what does g of three go? Imagine putting g of three in here. Then this would output three, goes in here, goes to one, and then you get g of one. That means this wraps back to g of one. So in cycle notation, if I this function right here is actually this one. Notice with putting a G inverse and a G on either side, it actually modifies this guy in the following way. Using that idea, let's do another one, a little bit more complicated. Let's do one, two, three, four. And why don't we do one, two, three over here? And then over here, let's do the inverse of one, two, three, which we can write as one, three, two. So what should this be? 
since this is the inverse of this, we could think of just applying this to the individual entries right here. So think, one will be replaced by what this does to it. Well, one goes to two there. So this one in this cycle would just be a two. Next, what happens to this two? Well, replace it with three. What happens to this three? Well, replace it with one. What happens to this four? Well, this function does nothing to it. So just let it stay. That is the result. Thanks for watching.